Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this session. The main objective of this session uh, is to discuss the mechanism of Fed fund rate determination. I'm just showing you one newspaper clippings. Uh, it's showing um, the Fed again uh, increasing uh, the Fed fund target rate. Uh, it is now increased to 2.25 to 2.5 percentage. So that means the lower limit is 2.25 and the upper range is 2.5 percentage. So in the previous discussion, in the previous session, we have seen that um, there is this is the target rate, but actually the market determines the demanding banks and supplying banks uh, because uh, Fed fund rate is nothing but a short term interest rate in, in, in the context of interbanking overnight loans uh, that is loans between banks right overnight uh, bank loans and actually the actual rate that is the effective Fed fund rate uh, uh, will be determined by the market forces that the uh, demand and supply for uh, interbank loans. But Fed is going to have a say on the upper limit and the lower limit. The lower limit it can be maximum go below this, it cannot go below 2.25 percentage and it cannot go uh, above 2.5 percentage. So in today's session we are going to see how Fed is able to achieve uh, this lower limit and upper limit. That means the Fed fund rate, the effective Fed fund rate is going to be somewhere between uh, 2.25 and 2.5 percentage. That is a uh, by determined by the market forces. Then our focus is how Fed is going to influence, uh, make the lower limit and the upper limit. How do they define it? Uh, how they may ensure that uh, the effective Fed fund rate is going to fall uh, between this lower and upper limit. So importantly one question uh, which we have little bit touched upon uh, in the previous session, uh, why would banks uh, trade in Fed fund market and how the transaction have been settled. So the question we uh, answered for the, the first question we answered that the uh, banks trade in the Fed fund market because some banks when they face the reserve deficit. Uh, because they need to keep a uh, required reserve with the central bank when they have a deficit uh, they borrow from other banks and at the same time some other banks they are having uh, some surplus they are having excess reserve and instead of keeping it with them or with the central bank uh, they would make to gain make some gain some profit by lending to uh, the needy bank the bank that is facing a deficit and since all these transactions because all these member banks they have uh, account with the Fed Federal Resource System, so all the transaction can be easily settled uh, through the Fed, right? Through the uh, Fed account, everything, all account can be easily uh, settled, so that it will be easy for the member banks to engage in the uh, Fed fund market, that the lending and borrowing. So coming to this, uh, why? Uh, because you know that uh, why banks trade uh, that uh, banks uh, engage in Fed fund market because some banks, banks with uh, their liabilities uh, falling this range, they have to keep only three percentage of their total deposit of their total deposit as uh, required reserve with the Federal Reserve System. At the same time, banks with a uh, high balance sheet, uh, that means with a uh, high liability, liability falling. Uh, above 124.2 million and they are uh, mandated to keep 10 percentage of their total demand and time li liabilities uh, with the central bank with the federal resource system. So in this case we what we can see that let us take the case of two banks. So because we saw here is that actually the small bank they have to keep only 3 percentage and the big bank uh, large bank they have to keep uh, 10 percentage. So normally e all these banks uh, in addition to required reserve they also they can also have keep some excess reserve in order to prevent uh, in order to as a cushion against uh, deposit outflow. So the, let us look at the bank that is a small bank let us put that bank B here uh, bank B. Uh, then the bank A who is uh, who has to keep 10 percentage of their total demand and time liabilities with the uh, uh, with the federal resource system. So let us see these are the assets and these are the liabilities assets and uh, liabilities. So what we can see that actually the asset the central bank they, the large bank they have to keep nearly 
10 percentage they need to keep as a required reserve and remaining let us see this one is we can see that uh, government securities uh, these are the government securities and these are the loans there that they have given so same way let us see here this bank has to keep uh, only three percentage um, uh, then this much is the government security uh, GSEC uh, and this much is the law this and let's make it like that and here uh, let us see uh, for example um, this much is the uh, deposit that is the liability and capital uh, that is the other part component of uh, liabilities right equity capital so here again let's make it this much is the deposits and this is the equity capital uh, in practice this is uh, the ideal situation so we can say that if the they have to keep only three percentage but what happens that uh, the bank b uh, bank b sometimes they will be having more they will be having excess reserve instead of this they, they will be having excess reserve with them uh, because um, as compared to the large banks uh, small banks have limited as compared to them relatively they have limited investment opportunities uh, so they will be keeping so and uh, in addition uh, to as a cushion against deposit outflow uh, they will they are they will be keeping uh, more uh, reserve with them so they will be having uh, more reserve in addition to required reserve they also have a excess reserve as well and this bank the large bank uh, who is supposed to keep uh, 10 percentage uh, sometime they may not be able to keep this 10 percentage they will be having for example 7 percentage only let us just see they have only 7 percentage what they will do the remaining amount they will be having more loans sometime they will be keeping uh, more loans more amount of loans they will be having because they have more investment opportunities these are their loans uh, now let us see uh, in this suppose central bank come up with uh, open market operations that means they are purchasing uh, more securities uh, they are purchasing uh, these government securities these government securities uh, when uh, fed is purchasing uh, same here overall when they are purchasing obviously you know that this uh, securities component comes down only this much and you know that when government securities are bought by when uh, fed by fed purchase government securities from the member banks then you can see that immediately after the transaction the the reserve of the banks will be increasing right this is what we have seen in the previous session immediately uh, as an outcome of open market purchase the proceed of this uh, transaction will be credited into the uh, member bank for example bank b when they are selling their government securities to fed then obviously you can see that their uh, share that in uh, their reserve excess reserve will be increasing so this is a bank wide uh, nationwide uh, operation that the open market operation so it's not only here uh, the assets or the the, the uh, reserves of uh, bank a bank b bank c everything will increase so that means when the open market operation is done when an open market purchase uh, is happening uh, what we can see that the liquidity of the banking system uh, the liquidity in the banking system increases right the liquidity in the banking system increases that means the not only for bank b but also for bank a and all, all the banks who are is participating in this uh, their government securities will be declining and as a result we can see that uh, their um, uh, reserves will be uh, increasing so that actually in their banking systems liquidity is increasing so we have also seen that uh, in the previous discussions that actually uh, reserve is uh, one of the most liquid assets uh, of the bank so the overall the liquidity increases as a result of open market operation so the important thing we need to remember here that when federal resource system is doing an open market purchase uh, the liquidity whether as a result the reserves of the banking system increases and liquidity with the entire banking system increases this has implications when we are going to discuss uh, the demand for reserve so when the when the open market operation happen and lots of liquidity the lots of um, fund has been uh, injected into the banking system through the reserve so that means the bank a also their reserve also increase so that means uh, their demand for reserve also come down 
okay their demand for uh, reserve also come down because they are getting excess reserve now they are getting uh, more reserve due to the uh, open market purchase so this is a little bit about the how just a illustration to show that uh, this is the suppose this is the borrowing uh, bank uh, borrowing that the reserve borrowing bank a demanding bank and this bank is the lending in the the lender in the fed fund market but whenever it comes to the uh, supply of reserve actually what we are going to discuss here two things we are going to discuss one we are going to say uh, demand for reserve a uh, demand for reserve um, then second one is a uh, supply of reserve supply of reserve so when we talk about the demand for reserve we are actually uh, talking about this bank uh, who is having the who who needs a uh, reserve uh, to meet their uh, reserve requirement but when it comes to supply of reserve in fact we are not going to talk about this bank because supply of reserve is coming from a uh, fed fund federal reserve system the supply of fund is done by uh, federal reserve system uh, in that way we will be developing our supply and demand framework here so simply demand is from the banks who is demanding in the fed fund market but the supply though this bank is supplying uh, fed fund uh, fed fund in the market but the reserve we are going to talk about the demand for reserve and supply of reserve so the supply of reserve uh, please keep in mind actually uh, this is done by the federal reserve system so here in this example when they are making open market purchase uh, the reserve supply of reserve is increasing not just one bank with the entire banking system uh, when they are doing uh, open market operation that the open market purchase so coming talking about the market for reserves and the federal funds rate determination uh, we need to talk about the demand and supply in the market for reserves so what we are going to answer here is that uh, what happens to the quantity of reserves demanded by banks holding everything else constant uh, as the federal funds rate changes due to market forces or due to uh, federal reserve systems uh, intervention suppose uh, fed fund rate changes then how uh, the quantity demand quantity of reserves demanded by banks change what happens to the demand for reserves by banks so here um, also we need to talk when we talk about reserve we are not not only just talking about the demand for uh, required reserve only uh, we also need to also need to include excess reserve as well so sometimes bank prefer to keep uh, excess reserve in addition uh, on top of the required reserve that we know that that is a cost that is actually an insurance against uh, deposit outflow but at the same time to make our demand and supply analysis uh, more meaningful uh, to make uh, more context uh, kind of specific as well uh, we also need to think that the cost there is a cost of holding uh, these uh, of uh, excess reserve that is the interest day, the rate that could have been earned uh, minus the interest rate that is paid on this reserve by federal reserve system so importantly uh, when uh, the member banks keep their reserve with the federal reserve system uh, they get interest income interest interest rate or they also get they get interest rate on uh, required reserve ratio this also they get they also get uh, interest rate on uh, excess reserve as well both get same uh, interest rate so when they are keeping excess reserve they can keep more and more excess key reserve uh, as a cushion against uh, as an insurance against deposit outflow but there is an opportunity cost because if they cost if they the, this is the cost of holding this is the interest rate that could have been earned that means uh, suppose they are keeping 5 billion uh, 5 billion suppose this is excess reserve uh, they could have spent uh, this money for uh, giving loans for example or buying government securities right so that means uh, this interest rate is maybe is going to be greater than the rate of interest that they are getting from a uh, federal reserve system that is the interest rate on reserve uh, now uh, this is also i am showing you the interest rate since the fall of 2008 the fed has paid interest on reserves at a level that is set at a fixed amount below the federal funds rate target so i am showing you here this is the effective the interest rate on uh, reserve balances so that is 2.4 percentage 
uh, that is that is being given by the federal reserve system to the member banks who are is keeping uh, their reserve with the central bank with the federal reserve system this is same for uh, both uh, required reserve as well as for excess reserve this is as on uh, 28 uh, july 2022 so before i also showing you there is the uh, interest rate on required reserve and excess reserve on other dates that means uh, november 2019 november 2018 uh, on march uh, 2021 so you can see that the required reserve it was 1.55 uh, on 2019 uh, but it was given uh, 2 2.20 on uh, november 2018 but almost one year before march 2021 the interest rate on uh, a reserve was only the, the one zero point one percentage only so it has implication the interest rate on uh, reserves have uh, implication on the fed fund rate determination especially when we are going to talk about the lower bound the lower limit uh, of uh, the fed fund rate the in the in determining the lower rate in actually determining uh, uh, the lower li lower limit of uh, the fed fund rate target rate uh, the interest rate on these reserves are going to play an important role in determining the lower lower limit uh, of the fed fund rate lower limit of the fed fund rate uh, uh, the interest rate on reserve is going to play a crucial role so let us discuss that one when we are going to discuss the uh, while deriving uh, the demand for reserves so in this diagram on the x axis uh, we are going to measure the quantity of reserves that means we will be talking about the demand for reserve uh, and as well as the supply of reserve we are going to measure both on the uh, x axis that is on the horizontal axis and on the y axis the vertical axis we are going to uh, measure mainly the fed fund rate that is mainly all interpretation will be in terms of fed fund rate but in addition to that we are also going to talk about the interest rate that is central bank is charging uh, on the commercial bank for their loan that is the discount rate so that is the interest discount rate or interest rate on discount that is we are let us measure uh, denote it with uh, id uh, id so that means uh, interest rate discount rate interest rate on uh, that means the discount rate shortly right so then uh, fed fund rate let us call it as ffr uh, fed fund uh, rate or fed fund rate or and then interest rate on reserve uh, let us call it as interest rate on reserve interest rate on reserves uh, so what we are going to see here is that uh, our uh, demand curve and going to be a downward sloping demand curve that means uh, on the downward sloping demand curve we can see that when higher the fed fund rate suppose in the fed fund rate in the market uh, is Fed fund rate is uh, keep on increasing, uh, then the demand for uh, reserve will be coming down. So you know the reason. The reason is that when there is increase in Fed fund rate, the opportunity cost of holding uh, excess reserve, uh, this will come down and they will demand, they, the demand for reserve will come down. So we will explain this one because in this demand curve, uh, always remember that in this demand for reserve, it include both the RR and year uh, then only the, our interpretation i uh, against um, that the, the quantity demanded against the changes in fed fund rate will become more meaningful so is actually uh, from this uh, downward sloping demand portion of the demand curve what we can see that higher the fed fund rate lower will be the uh, demand for reserve and lower the fed fund rate when the fed fund rate keep on decreasing suppose when the fed fund rate is uh, keep on decreasing then banks especially the large banks what they will think that uh, they will demand more reserve uh, that means they will be spending or from their assets uh, they will be spending uh, they won't be keeping more reserve with them they will be spending their asset uh, making a portfolio making a portfolio reallocation uh, in a way that they will be spending their money for uh, in the form of loans and buying government securities uh, because they see that when they want to uh, to meet the uh, RR uh, to meet the RR 
uh, and to meet the uh, year, uh, they can borrow from the uh, Fed fund market. So, lower the uh, Fed fund market, the opportunity cost of holding um, excess reserve decline. So, they will be spending more of their money fund for uh, in buying government securities and uh, giving loans. So, that means when smaller the lower the Fed fund rate, uh, they will be demanding more. Then another thing you might have observed here that the demand curve become horizontal after certain point of time. Actually, this point is here. Uh, this is the let us connect it to through a dotted line. Um, so, this line this is actually the interest rate on uh, reserve. Suppose this one is 2.25, this is the lower bound uh, in the recently announced uh, federal fund target rate. Uh, when the uh, this is what um, the central bank or the federal resource system is going to give uh, when they keep their uh, reserve uh, in the central bank that means even if a required reserve and excess reserve they are going to all banks they are going to get uh, two point two five percentage if they keep their money uh, with the central bank so since the central bank is going to give uh, 2.25 percentage of a uh, percentage as the reserve on required reserve and excess reserve the fed fund rate uh, will never go because the effective fed fund rate the actual fed fund rate will never go below the interest rate on reserve that means uh, we are going to see that here uh, when uh, interest rate is uh, interest rate on reserve has been fixed at 2.25 percentage uh, we can see that uh, Fed fund rate will never go below this. After that, the demand for uh, reserve is going to be elastic. That means, what does it mean? What is the implication of this? So, that means when the, the demand curve sloping downward curve that becomes flat, you know why? Because when the federal funds rate is above the rate paid on excess reserve, that means above 2.5. Whenever the federal funds rate is above the rate paid on excess reserve, that is means in our example, if it is above 2.25 percentage, uh, then here any point, suppose take this point for example, when the Fed fund rate uh, keep on changing until this, uh, the bottom line is uh, 2.25 percentage, uh, the opportunity cost uh, of holding excess, excess reserve falls and the quantity demanded uh, rises right so it's keep on demand the quantity demanded keep on rising but it will it won't go below 2.25 percentage because suppose what if suppose we assume that uh, fed fund rate became for example uh, due, so due to some forces what suppose what if fed fund rate is 2.2 2 percentage so if fed fund rate is 2 percentage and but the uh, fed fund federal resource system is giving 2.25 percentage as the interest rate on uh, reserve be it excess, re excess reserve or required reserve. So, all the member banks particularly those who are uh, lending their reserve in the uh, lending their fund in the Fed fund market they would not prefer to lend to the at the rate of uh, 2 percentage instead they can deposit their money they can just keep their money ideal that means already they are having account with the fed fund uh, federal resource system because then then there they will be getting the uh, interest rate of 2.25 percentage so there is no point in uh, giving lending this money in the fed fund market at a 2 percentage so the, because of that uh, simply to summarize this point uh, when the the lower limit of federal fund rate will be equal to the interest rate on reserve because it cannot go below fed fund rate can uh, cannot go below because the thing is that uh, it doesn't make sense for the lending banks to lend uh, to the uh, in the fed fund market below the uh, uh, interest rate on reserve that means instead of lend, uh, lending in the fed fund market they can just keep their money uh, idle in the with the federal resource system uh, they will be easily uh, getting this 2.25 percentage so in this way what we have seen here is that after that fed the interest rate on reserve uh, the demand curve becomes um, uh, perfectly uh, horizontal that means infinitely elastic that means we cannot draw it below below this means actually uh, the price uh, fed fund rate will never go below or ir that is 2.25 percentage in our example so this one cannot happen
right because of the supply and demand for uh, supply supplying bank and demanding bank uh, in the uh, fed fund market uh, what if um, suppose uh, if we are drawing this one suppose the initially uh, the uh, required reserve is for example suppose required reserve is 10 percentage what if uh, the bank is going to central federal reserve system is going to increase the uh, required reserve to 11 percentage or increasing to 12 percentage so the, what you can see that when federal reserve system increase the required reserve but the fed fund rate we are not making any change what we can see that the curve will be shifting uh, rightwards so that means suppose the fed fund rate is suppose here the market determined suppose we say that uh, fed fund rate is for example 2.4 percentage uh, so here uh, when suddenly the federal reserve system is increasing the reserve from uh, 10 percentage to 11 percentage then at the same rate they have to demand more reserve because the reason that now the central bank has the federal reserve system has increased the required reserve ratio the required reserve they have increased so that means as a result there will be more demand for a reserve as a result the curve will be uh, shifting uh, rightwards and similarly what if they reduce instead of from say 10 percentage they make and from 10 percentage to they make 9.5 percentage so now at 9 percentage then they will be uh, the demand curve will be shifting from uh, right to leftwards so these are the changes uh, going to happen um, when uh, there is change in uh, required reserves that means when the required reserve is increasing uh, increase when the federal resources system hike the required reserve the curve will be shifting rightwards and when they reduce the curve will be shifting uh, leftwards so having discussed the demand part uh, the two things we need to remember here one is the uh, position the position that means it shift right, rightwards and leftwards that is due to the change in uh, required reserve and the slope of the uh, demand curve we are going to say that the slope of the demand curve is uh, negatively sloping until the interest rate suppose if they increase the uh, interest rate to 2.3 percentage then suppose from here then what we can see that then the demand curve will be like that from here it is becoming uh, is going to be like that the demand for uh, reserves uh, new curve will the curve will look like this uh, suppose this is the original curve is the central one then we can draw the horizontal part here that means when they are uh, increasing the interest rate on um, interest rate on uh, reserve similarly if they reduce it further suppose if they make uh, 2.20 suppose they reduce uh, interest rate on reserve then what we can do that we need to draw the diagram like this uh, is going to be like this so accordingly uh, it will be like this so in this session uh, we have completed our discussion uh, about the demand for reserve and in the next session uh, let us discuss the supply uh, supply of reserve and subsequently how interest rate is uh, the fed fund rate is determined uh, in the market thank you see you in the next session